Ann Barclow is the horticultural crew chief in the city of Greenwood, and she loves to grow things, and she's had some wonderful things, even in this cold, cold weather. And you said that it's not hard for just a regular person to get seeds and to, um, to grow transplants and put them out in the garden. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, let's first talk about some of the things that you brought from your own garden and from places around the city. Okay. okay. I've got, well, I've got some wonderful varieties of kale. I've got actually four varieties here. I've got the Russian and the red boar, the winter boar, and the Tuscan, one of Gosh. my favorites. So and look at that. the difference in texture. Mm -hmm. What a fun salad mm -hmm. you can make with little pieces of that. Yes. Or you could just cook them. Yes. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Yeah. Wonderful kale. Yes. And holds mm -hmm. up so well mm -hmm. in the cold. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and uh, then you've got some interesting got some broccoli. broccoli things. Yes, uh -huh. I have some purple sprouting broccoli. Uh-huh. And now tell me it, what sprouting broccoli means. Well, it doesn't make a head. Okay. It sprouts off little sprouts from the side. And oh. these would be great in a salad, or you could steam them up or stir fry them. And they turn green when you cook uh -huh. them, though, so they're not quite as pretty. But. Well, but they certainly are charming. Yes. And for a dip, you could use them just like that. That's and right. And they would keep that beautiful oh, yes. purple color. That'd Wouldn't that be fun? And yes. they're just the right size. Uh -huh. Usually you have to cut the broccoli all up to get it just the right size for I know. dip. So purple sprouting, purple sprouting broccoli. And then we covered up this magnificent. Ooh. Yes, um, golden. the golden beets Whoa. that we have these for uh, at the farmer's market in Greenwood. Isn't that Coming wonderful? Up, yeah. Gosh, nice I nice think y'all's market sounds like something we should check out. And mm -hmm. right now it's open on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, I okay. Think. I think it's Monday and Saturday. Monday and Saturday, yes. excuse me. Okay. <laughs> and then I was so surprised because you said, I didn't think you could have lettuce after it got cold, but you got this um, day before yesterday. I do. This is called North Pole. It's, yes. a very, it's, it's hardy, but it's not as hardy you need a cover. Mm -hmm. We put row covers on top okay. of them and, and keep them, but I use green ice and North Pole and they that do really well. That sounds like it's really, meant to do they well do really in cold well. weather. Uh -huh. And sh tell us a little about this row cover. Well, this row cover here is a very light row cover and I put that with a hoop and mm -hmm. put that over my lettuces and Swiss chard and bok choy. And if it gets colder than, let's say, in the 20s, I will add an extra layer on there, maybe right. a blanket okay. or a flannel sheet, an old flannel sheet, and put that over it. And the it. sun actually goes yes. through this cloth. Yeah, I keep this on all through the winter and just maybe add something if it gets really cold, but the light gets through, the moisture can get and through. And you use this on the, on the brassicas that are more um, tender to the cold. You yeah, wouldn't need it lettuce. on everything. No, you wouldn't need it on, on your the cabbage or, and or the broccoli collars. did well we and the kale, the collards we collars. have. Yes. And you even said there are a few wonderful herbs that make it through the, through yes, the cold I weather. Have, yes, I do. I have some thyme uh -huh. and some oregano and some mint. How about that? So we yeah, can use so we those. can use those to um, flavor mm -hmm. all these wonderful vegetables yes, that we're we growing. Can. And then over here, you said that you've got some things, some of these that um, you grew and some from the farmer's market, but these are smaller versions of cabbages. Yes. At least two of them are. I'm really enjoying doing mini cabbages. Mini cabbage. And that one on the left is conehead. <laughs> it's a, it's a Caraflex named. pointed yes. cabbage and very mild flavor. And the, one, the other one is Savoy. Sometimes I think you might see those in the grocery mm -hmm. store, but oh, sweet, very and so sweet. so nice for coleslaw. Oh, coleslaw, for coleslaw and salads and stir fries. And did one of your wonderful farmers bring these to the market? Yes. Yeah, Brussels sprouts. Isn't that fun? They love the cold. Gosh, there's yes. so many. You, winter yes. does not have to be boring, does yes. it? No, well, does I would it? like to grow some things from seed, and you reminded us that the way to find out a lot of information is to use the Clemson HGIC fact sheet planning, not planting, but planning yes. a garden because it has dates in it of when you put things out. That's right. It has the seed date. It has the transplant date. Okay. So it's, yeah, and you so. started these seeds just to bring on the show. We feel I so did. honored. I did. <laughs> so let's talk about what you started and how you would move them up so you would have transplants at the right time. Yes, yes. And these are lettuce seeds. And I will plant these in January. 
and it, before I would plant them in August or, mm -hmm. or July for the fall and winter, but these I'm planting now in January for your spring. All right. So I just put a little vermiculite in here. And vermiculite it, is a medium that you can find yes. in garden centers? Yes, it's very light, it holds moisture. Okay. And so you wouldn't use potting soil, you would get a special medium that was very light yes, for the very light. small seeds. Yes, okay. yes, so it dries out, okay. it dries out fast too. And I would add the seeds, and then I put a little more vermiculite on top of the seeds yes. and press it down so that oh. it makes contact. Okay. And then I put a bag over it. Now you go water it? Oh, well, yes, we yeah, water, water it. <laughs> yeah. We'll put, I'll usually water it from the bottom because okay. it has holes. And so so, so you got your containers yes. and you poked a lot of holes in it. Yes. You put the vermiculite in, you s gently scattered your seeds, put a little vermiculite on top and pressed mm. them down. That's right. Okay. That's so right. now we're going to put the container with the holes in it. In water. On this little tray. Yes, and I fill this with water. All right. And when it gets nice and wet, I take it out of there. Oh. And then I put it in its own little mini greenhouse. Okay. And so Do I actually okay. have a greenhouse, but this is a little mini. Well, I don't, and so then, I yes, need a mini And then greenhouse. I just seal it up like okay. so. And, and that's then, what you do when after you've put the seeds in mm -hmm. so that the seeds will have enough humidity and won't dry out. Is that's that correct? Right. That's right. Okay. You don't want seeds to dry out. And then once they sprout, which will probably be in a few days if you have it in a warm spot, Yes. and then you can take it out of the Oh, the so don't leave greenhouse. it after it, after it sprouts. Take them, take, don't that's leave right. it in the plastic. That's right. Okay. That's okay. right. And then you have these lovely seedlings that come up. And then what you do is you take, and this is the hard part for you, right? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, I'll do it. They this. look so <laughs> tiny and delicate. <laughs> so I'm then we take... So that people we can take see. these and you and loosen the vermiculite up uh -huh. a little bit, just like so. All right. And then you go and you take a little bit. I take them by their leaf. Yes. So that way, if it breaks, it'll still be okay. Okay. So you can see can this see. Little, root. little root. Uh huh. And then I take it over to a little four-inch pot and make a little a little hole for it. And I bury it all the way down to the the leaves. Oh. So I bury the stem, kind of like you would do tomatoes. Okay. And bury it down. You don't want it to be leggy and fall over. Okay. And then you keep it like that and you water it at, you can, this, now you can water it from mm -hmm. the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And water it as needed. You can have it by a sunny window or you can put it outside on a not too cold day and and let it let it start growing and when it gets full size let's say in about a month you can place that out in your garden you probably want to look at the 10 day forecast make sure it's not going to be an ice storm or anything right. like that okay and then you have it well i am so excited i'm going to go right home and look at some of the wonderful catalogs that we now have available mm -hmm. and find some of these great seeds mm -hmm. and i'm going to um, make certain that i can have a salad just <laughs> as nice as the one that you brought over here for your supper tonight oh thank you thank you so much <laughs>